Hey, it's Miss Brandy again, and this is week three of Fantastic Fridays. This is going to be our last week doing this together. I hope you've had a ton of fun doing this with me. Um, hopefully, we'll get to do this some more in the future, okay? All right, so this week we're going to talk about folk art, okay? And we'll talk about it when we get started, what folk art means and some famous artists that do folk art, all right? So, are you ready to open up your box and see what's inside? Okay. All right. So this week it looks really simple, but we're gonna do two projects using these materials and they're just gonna look really cool when it's done, okay? So first you're gonna have this big box of markers. There's lots of colors in here and it's gonna be really fun to work with. And then you'll have not one, but two pieces of paper. You feel how this paper is nice and thick? That's called cardstock, okay? Great paper to do art on. So you have two pieces of paper because you're gonna do two pictures using the markers, all right? All righty, are you ready to get started on your week three project? Great, let's get started. Alrighty, so the project that we're gonna do this week is gonna be a folk art piece. Now, folk art means that the piece of art shows the lives and the feelings of just ordinary people. So um, things in a community, a farm, people working on the farm, a town with people walking around doing their shopping or their chores, um, showing what real life is all about. And some famous folk artist that I really like is one called uh, Grandma Moses, and this is some of her work. You can see that she does a lot of pictures of fields, um, farms, towns, things like that. And then another one is Hambone, okay? And Hambone doesn't live that far from us. He is a Native American uh, heritage man, and he just does some of the coolest things from what life was like in early America. And then you also have right here in Minden and my fourth grade teacher, Miss Cora Lou Robinson. Here she is. She does a lot of scenes of uh, things right here in Minden and Louisiana. Um, lots of pictures of our buildings and our water tower, our football stadiums. She does all kinds of cool work and um, she is very celebrated and she's right here in Minden. Okay, so the first one that we're going to do is going to be of a field with a tree. This is what it looks like. And um, again, it's not gonna look a lot like those other artists, but we're gonna use a technique called line work, okay? So we're gonna use our markers and our paper to create uh, what's called perspective. Again, we talked about that with our very first week, except this time we're gonna do it a little bit differently, okay? Um, in this perspective drawing, you're gonna have what's called the foreground or what's closest to you your middle ground, which is what's behind what's closest to you, and then your background, which is what's furthest away, okay? So when you're standing out in a field and you're looking, you have what's closest to you, what's just a little bit beyond that, and then the background, which is what's furthest away from you, okay? So I'm going to take one of my pieces of paper and I'm gonna turn it this way, just like we did last week with our face drawing, okay? And then I'm gonna start taking my markers out of my box. Come on out of there, markers. Woo! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna straighten those up. We don't want them rolling off the table and getting away from us, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my black marker, black. I'm gonna put the cap on the end like that so I don't lose it, okay? And what I'm gonna do is start with my foreground first, so what's closest to me, and that's gonna be at the bottom of the paper. I'm gonna start there and then work my way up, okay? So I'm gonna start with some rock shapes down here. So just 
some kind of blob shapes, okay? And I'm going to come off and layer those on top of one another. All right. Come in different directions. Maybe go up the page a little bit. Remember, come all the way down to the edge of your paper. So these are gonna be some rocks really close to us. And out of these rocks, I am going to draw a flower. So I'm gonna draw two lines going straight up, okay? Then a little circle right here for the center of the flower. And then some petals coming off of it. Just little loop-de-loops. And however you draw a flower is fine, okay? Then maybe a little leaf coming off of it right there. I think I'll come over here and make another flower. All right, and there's my little stem, okay? All right, so now we have our first little rolling hill that we're gonna be doing. And I'm just going to come over here and do a big swooping line across the page from edge to edge. Next, I'm going to draw a tree right here. So we have a tree in the distance. So I'm going to come uh, about right here and I'm going to start drawing some lines like this. That's the roots of our tree. Okay. Just like that. It almost looks like a hand splat out. Okay. Then off of that, I'm going to come up and do my tree trunk. Come up and kind of swoop it to each side. Swoop, swoop. Then I'm going to take a line and bring it right there. And another one on this side. All right. Then I'm going to come up and make a V shape. And again, on each side of that V shape. I'm going to bring that all the way down right here and connect it to those other lines that I made, okay? All right, I'll give you a chance to, to uh, catch up because that's a complicated little system there, okay? Then coming down here off of my tree trunk, I'm just gonna start making these kind of bubbly, rounded shapes, okay? I might even come off the page a little bit like that, that's okay. Then I'm gonna make some grass, around my tree. All right, I'll give you a minute to catch up. And next behind it, I'm gonna make more really rounded, different shape of a hill, okay? So I'm gonna come up to my tree and I'm gonna skip on over and come way down. I think I'll just bring it on down to that line. Then I think I'll do a couple more just like that. Okay. All righty. Next, I'm going to do some mountains in the distance. So the furthest thing away from me. Okay. And I think I'll make a jagged edge coming up like this and then a straight line down. Okay. Then I think I'll come over here and do another straight line with another jagged edge. And then back behind it, I'll do another big mountain. So as you can see, I think I'll do a wavy line on this side. So as you can see, this mountain's closer than that one, then the big one is behind it, okay? That way we don't have the line from this mountain cutting across this one in front of it. Go from your front to your back. Then I think that I will draw a circle right here for the sun. All right, now you've got all of your black outlines down. We can start doing some really fun things with the colors to color in this page, okay? We've got a nice pretty little meadow and mountain valley going on. So first we have rocks. What color are rocks? They are brown. So I'm gonna do mine in brown. And I think what I'm gonna do is just make these diagonal straight lines going all the way across. So starting at the black outline down to the edge of the paper and keeping those straight with one another. 
okay? And then I think on this one, I'll go in a different direction, okay? So we see that it's two different rocks. All right, so you see how that looks? And then on this one, I think that I will do this way again. Okay. But then I'm also going to go the same direction that I did on my second rock to create this little diamond pattern. Okay. Give you a second to catch up. Then on this one, I think I'll just go straight up and down. Okay. And then I think I'll switch back to the first pattern that I did. Just like that. And then the second pattern that I did. All righty. Cheers look a little bit something like that. Cool. All righty. So I think that I should start coloring in my flower. So instead of just coloring it, what I'm going to do is create lines just like I did on my rocks. So I've got green lines on my leaf and my stem. And I'll do the same thing to the stem on this other one. So again, not completely coloring it in, just putting lines of the color that I want to use. And so for my petals of my flower, I think I'll do orange. And again, I'm just going to create lines going through my petal, I'm not coloring it in. Just doing a line. Okay. And I think I'll make the other flower pink. And this time I'll do dots. I'll just make dots on the petals. Okay, and I will color the very middle of it yellow because pollen is yellow and that's where the pollen is on flowers. So that's what I got going on so far. All right. So my first little hill right here, I think I'm going to do with red. Now we're going to use a technique here that's a little bit tricky, okay? What I want you to do is make lines that follow the curve of that one and go all the way down, okay? And then we're gonna go across like that, all right? So, we're just gonna follow that curve. You see? Come down a little bit, follow it again. Now, when you come up to an object like your flower, just come up to the black line, skip over to the other side, and keep going, okay? Again, I hit the rock, I stop at the black line, I skip over to the other side, and I keep going. You don't wanna draw through the things that you've done, okay? I hit my flower, and then I come to the other side and I keep going.
hit my flower, come to the other side, and keep going. Just keep doing that all the way down. And if you're starting to lose the curve of your heel, that's okay. All right, now that we have all of those lines going across but not coming over our flower or our rocks, next we're gonna go straight up and down, okay? From black line to black line. Just keep going all the way across. So you see, I'm going from the black line right here down to the black outline of my rock. And again, when you come across an object like your flower, just stop at the black line, come straight down to the next black line and keep going. All right, so now that should be kind of what it looks like. All right, next I am going to take my, mm -hmm, I think I'll do green, okay? I think I'll do green. All right, so I have my green and this time I'm gonna make a different pattern in this field right here, okay? I'm gonna do like a swirly pattern. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna start creating a swirl. So just going in a circle, but coming out farther and farther and farther away. Again, when you hit a black line, just skip, go over and keep coming down. All right, so I have that. You see? And then I'm gonna stop with that swirl and come down here and start a new swirl. Now, when you reach the edge of the paper, just come up and act like you're continuing that swirl. Hit a black line, just pretend like you're coming till you meet paper again, come down. Okay, I'm gonna stop on that one for a minute. Next, I'm gonna come over here and start a new swirl. I hit a line, so I'm gonna stop and keep coming around. I'm gonna pick that one up right there. Hit a black line, come up here, come down. I'm just gonna finish out those lines right there, okay? And then I think I do another one right over here. I'm gonna be careful not to go over my grass. Okay, I'm gonna go around it, go around my tree. I'm just gonna keep on going like this. So what we're gonna start doing is kind of blending these swirls together, okay? So 
what I'm going to do is bring a line over here to where it kind of meets this other one and then come over here. But then I'm also going to take a line for this swirl and follow that curve. Okay. So you see where they start to come together like that. Okay. Do a line for this swirl, then a line for this swirl and another line for that swirl. I think I'll come up there. So let's work on these. Okay. I'm going to do a line following this circle. And then I'm going to do one for this one. Okay. Line for this one. Then a line for that one. And I'm just going to work on this corner, but then we'll continue it up there too. So line for this circle, line for that circle, line for this circle, line for that circle. And then I have a little bit of space. I'm going to do one more line right there. So you can see how that's doing that. I created a line for each circle running into each other. Okay. So now I'm going to finish that space up there, which would probably, let's see, I'll do one for that one. One for that one. Okay. So now I've got my swirly pattern uh, filled. That's my middle ground. Okay. So let's work on our mountains in the background. I think that I will make this first mountain a zigzag pattern using, I'm going to use orange and yellow. Okay. But I'm going to start off down here and I'm going to make a zigzag. Can you see my zigzag line going straight across? All right. Then I'm going to come up just a little bit and create another orange zigzag. All right. I'm going to do, I'm keep doing that. I'm going to leave some space in between the orange because that's where I'm going to put the yellow. Okay. I might even go in there and do some red too. We'll see. All right. So now I'm going to come in between the orange and put a yellow zigzag line. Yeah, I think I do want to put some red on that one. So I'm going to go in between each yellow and orange line and do a red one. And you kind of follow the zigzag pattern of the lines between it. Okay. Which is kind of tricky. Okay, so now I have my mountain, my first mountain anyways, okay? So then let's do this mountain, which is like a whole other uh, mountain here, and we're gonna do it in a whole different color, okay? So I think for this one, I will do straight lines using my light blue and my dark blue, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start with my light blue and make just a straight line across. I'm just doing that right there. Okay. Then I think I'll come up a little bit and make a line going across just like that. And I'm going to keep going up, doing the same thing, go straight across. All right, so there we go. And then I'll come in between them and do the darker blue. Oops, I got a little crooked on that one. That's okay. Right, 
there we got our blue mountain. You see how all of these different shapes and lines are coming together to create a really cool picture. All right, next I think that I will do purple for this mountain. And I think what I wanna do with it is, hmm, <laughs> what do I wanna do? I'll go up and down, okay? So we've got zigzags straight across and up and down. So I'm just gonna take my purple and just create a line going straight down, staying on that mountain only. Alrighty, so I got my purple lines there. And I think I'll take my pink and I'll go across, okay? So you see what I'm doing there? So again, when I come across this mountain, I'm gonna stop at the black line come straight over and keep going across. Run into the mountain, come straight over, come across. Just like we've been doing. Okay, there we go, we got that. Very cool. So let's come over here back to our tree and our grass. So I think for the grass, I'll use, even though grass is green, but grass is obviously not red and mountains aren't orange and purple and pink and stuff. So we can do a whole new um, color on our grass that we've never thought of before, okay? So how about we make it this dark blue color? Why not? So I'm just gonna come in here and um, make lines going straight up. See, you can do it however you want. That's just what I'm doing. Actually, I'm gonna do a diagonal pattern, just like how we did on this rock right here. So that's what I got. Okay, but for my tree trunk, I do think that I will do the brown. All right. So, this time what I'm going to do is follow these lines all the way around and then I'll show you what I do with that next. So, I'm just going to come just off of my black right here and follow that line straight down into this root. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to follow the outline over here and then in that one and then come straight up and follow that, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna follow this one too. Okay? And then I'm gonna come inside of it and follow it again. I'm gonna keep doing that, okay? All right, can you see that? I've just followed, I've just followed the outline of the tree that we made and then came in and did it again and came in and did it again. You see that it looks like wood, doesn't it? Pretty cool. Now I do think that I will make my tree green. And I think with this one, I'm going to, <laughs> I think I will continue to make these swirly patterns just because I like it so much. You can do what you want, okay? So I'm gonna start one right there, and then I think I'll start one over here. Just coming down, okay? And then maybe I'll start one over here too. So again, when I run into another one, 
um, we just stop and then keep on going with another circle. So you see they ran into each other. So I'm gonna make a line for this one on all sides and then make another one for this circle, then one for that circle, then one for this circle. I'm just gonna keep doing that. So now we've got our tree, okay? Now last things last, Actually, you know what? I want to add yellow to that tree to make it just a little bit different from that. So what I'm going to do is all of my white lines in between all this green, I'm just going to follow it with some yellow. Okay. Again, you do not have to do this. This is just something that I want to do. So in all of my white spaces, I'm just going to come in with my yellow marker and make a line. You don't, you don't have to fill it in completely. There can still be some white there, but I've just added a little bit more color. You see how it's different now than this down here? You could do the same down here. You could add a different color if you wanted to. That's totally up to you. Alrighty. So next, I think in the sky, I'm gonna keep my yellow and I'm just gonna make these like kind of loop-de-loop uh shapes in the sky let's see can you see it very well i'm just going in and i'm just going loop and then going in the other direction then going in this direction then going in that direction i'm just kind of swirling it around swirl swirl loop de loop you do it however you want to do it though okay whatever you want to do it in the sky if you want to make it blue make it blue if you want to make it purple make it purple just whatever you want to do just make it a different shape than the other uh things that we've done a different pattern i mean not a different shape different pattern I'm just going to fill in all these little spaces of my sky. So now I've got that. I know it's not easy, easy to see that yellow on camera, but it's there. So just last, I just have my sun. Okay. And I think I will do it orange. And I just think I'm going to do a polka dot sun. So I'm just going to come in here and add orange polka dots all over the place. Just like that. See, simple. So now that we've taken all of these simple lines and colors and shapes, we've made a pretty incredible little patchwork landscape here that shows us what our foreground or what is close to us, our middle ground and our background, which is what's furthest away from us, okay? All right, now, now that you're done with this one, which I bet looks really great, by the way, you can use this piece of paper to do a whole other thing. You can do it underwater, you can make buildings, you know, just like whatever you wanna do, okay? So what I think that I'm gonna do is create our Minden water tower, okay? Let's see if I can do this, all right? So first, I'm gonna create a hill. We are a hilly area. And then I think I'll come in here, maybe, hmm, where do I wanna do this at? I think I'll do it over here. I'm gonna make our water tower shape. So it's a big um, kind of circle, huh? Okay, that's the top of our water tower. 
Then I think we'll come down and make the legs. And then I think I'll come over here and do another little heel. About that. All right. And then around the water tower, it kind of has a little railing, doesn't it? And create a little shape like that with our railing. Okay. Then over here, I'm just going to create some other um, heel shapes. Being careful not to cross through my legs here. Okay. All right, I'm good with that. So I've got what's closest to me, my middle ground and my background. All right, so first, I think I wanna go ahead and do my Minden water tower. I'll put Minden. Right there, okay? And I think I'll color in the bottom. I'm just going to do a color in technique rather than all the line work. All right. Mending. Then I think that I will do some green down here. <clears throat> Let's see. I think I'll just continue with that swirling pattern. I like it a lot. I'll come over here and start another one. Because Miss Cora Lou Robinson, she always incorporates some mending up into her work. So this is kind of our nod to Miss Cora Lou Robinson. The good old mending water tower. All right, so here I am. I ran into my other swirl, so I'm just gonna come over here like this. Then I'll do that, that, and that. Then I'll make my swirl for this one. Okie dokie. Then I think I'll add some orange to this hill that the water tower is sitting on. I think I will do that up and down. And then across. Actually, no, I'm going to follow the heel just like we did in the other one. Okay, so now I got that. Ooh. And then I think for this one back here, I will use red. No, I got red on my water tower. Let me use purple. This is a big heel, okay? Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and break this up and make another heel, just like that. So now it won't be too much. And I think I'll use yellow for this one. I'll do that zigzag pattern again, like we did on that mountain in the last picture, zigzag. Okay, and then for this area back here, I'll do the purple. 
And let's see, for that one, I think that I will, hmm, I'll do straight lines, just straight across. So you see that one hit that one, so I'm gonna come over here and do it over there. I wonder which one you're doing. I, I want you to be doing something different from what I'm doing. If you're doing the same thing as me, that's fine. I just, this is your creative piece of paper. You do it how you want, okay? And then in my sky up here, I think I'll draw some clouds. Just these nice rounded shapes. I'll bring that one off the paper. Okay, and so in everywhere around those clouds, I'm just going to do blue dots everywhere, okay? That's what I'm doing with that. I'm just making little tiny, tiny, tiny blue dots. And just the sky. So not the clouds, not the water tower, just the sky. All right, be sure to come in between my legs right here because that's part of the sky too. All right, and there we go. So that was just a really quick um, little perspective line drawing right there. And I'm done with mine. You can keep working on yours however you want. But in the end, you'll have two really cool, colorful um, drawings that make something look like they're close, away, uh, close up and far away, okay? All righty, I hope you have a really fun summer and a really good school year next year. And I'll see you later, hopefully. Bye.